Hey everybody in the VC, it's Matt. It's been a while since I made a video. I've just been busy, not in the mood, and lazy, and some combination of all those things. Just uh, haven't found the time to do it. But I thought I would come back and do yet another Beach Boys review. Been doing their albums from uh, first to last in order of release. And uh, this has been, I think this has been about three years going that I started the first one two or three years ago, but finally we come to the end, at least for now. Uh, we come to the last Beach Boys album released so far. Uh, that's why God made the radio. There's the front. There's the back. Cover is uh, not great, but not terrible. Back cover is kind of dull. Shame they couldn't have put a picture of the band on there. Here's a um, picture of the label. They're on Capitol Records again. This came out June 5th of 2012. Hard to believe that that's been almost six years ago. It seems like it was just yesterday that this came out. Uh, so yeah, this album was in conjunction with their 50th anniversary as a band. 1962 to 2012, they did a big, huge tour, and they did a, a new album for the first time in in years, and the uh, album actually got to number three on Billboard charts in America, only got to number 15 in England, number three in America, that's their best showing for a new album since 1965, hard as that is to believe, plenty of their albums between 65 and and past 65 should have should have charted higher, but unfortunately they didn't. This is also uh, produced by Brian Wilson. It's their first album of new material without Carl, because Carl had passed away back in 98. It's also their first album with the original Beach Boys member David Marks back on board since the Little Deuce Coop album in 1963. He had, um, through the years, occasionally appeared on stage with them but had not been on record with them since 1963. So it's good to have David Marks back. Has all the, um, has Brian, unfortunately, Mike Love, David Marks, uh, Al Jardine, and Bruce Johnston. So all the original members, with the exception of Carl and Dennis, who sadly had passed away, uh, got good reviews. And um, yeah, I remember this is their first album, actually, Summer in Paradise was their last album of new material. Uh, not a very good album. Came out in 92, so this is their first album of new material in 20 years. Uh, Stars and Stripes came out in 1996. That was country western singers covering old Beach Boys songs with the Beach Boys playing and singing background on the album. That came out in 1996, so 16 year gap between this and their last album and a 20 year gap between this and their last album of new material. Of course, those last two albums are not great. They're um, pretty much everything from 1980 on was not very good, even though a few songs here and there on some of those albums, but not very good. And I think even Mike Love, who pretty much ran the band from that point on, finally figured out that nobody was interested in new Beach Boys music with the exception of the flute kit and Kokomo, which was also an awful song, but did hit number one. But other than that, nobody was really that interested in buying new Beach Boys material. And so he, as dumb as he is, he finally figured out to quit releasing new albums. And it's a good thing that we didn't have a ton of albums between 92 and this. And, um, it's also, though, would have been really sad had uh, Stars and Stripes or Somewhere in Paradise, whichever one you want to consider their last true album, if that would have been the capstone to a career of what's arguably the best American band ever. So it's a good thing we have this. And it was with some trepidation that I approached this. I remember hearing them on XM Radio an interview, I think it was on the 60s on 6 channel, because they were talking about the tour, which was upcoming at that point. And at the end of the interview, they said they're going to play their new song. And uh, I was expecting, kind of expecting the worst, expecting not very good. I uh, was pleasantly surprised, though, but we'll get to that. Let's see, what else do we have to say about this album? Can't think of anything right now. So we'll just go into the songs. The um, 
first song on side one is called Think About the Days, written by Brian Wilson and Joe Thomas. This is a largely instrumental song, even though it has uh, harmonies or harmonic singing by uh, most everyone in the group. This is a uh, very spiritual, very beautiful instrument, mainly instrumental. Got a very affecting and beautiful French horn coda at the end. Kind of reminds me of something off the Smile album. And so it's a good way to start the album. I give that song a 10. It's, it's short and sweet and makes its point. Okay, number two, that's the title track. That's why God made the radio. And when I heard that on the radio back in 2012 in my car, I remember where I was. I was in a parking lot of a grocery store just leaving after uh, getting groceries and heading home. And I kind of sat there to listen to the interview and the song. And uh, I love this song. It's, it's, it sounds like it's 1963 again. It's, it's, um, it's, uh, sounds somewhat current for 2012, but it also sounds like something that they could have written back on one of their 63, 64, 65 albums. This could have been on the Beach Boys Today or Surfer Girl album would have fit in fine. And, um, it was uh, 45, got to number 16 on the charts, so pretty good showing there. And just, uh, uh, it sounds like the Beach Boys of old. And now these guys are in their, in 2012, I guess they would have been in their 60s, but they're in their late 60s, early 70s now. How much of this is uh, treated in the studio as far as their, as their voice and people singing behind them, I don't know. But it sure sounds good on the radio, and it sounds good on this record. I'm going to give it a 10. It's a, um, like much of this album, it's kind of the Beach Boys trying to be the Beach Boys of the old days, be young again, but not in a silly way like the Rolling Stones have been trying to think they're young for the last 100 years, even though they're not. But it's also looking back, looking back at what was and realizing that, um, they're old now and that the end is kind of near, but it's also looking forward to what's, what, what they have left in life. And uh, it was kind of a depressing, reassuring, and uh, upbeat and sad sort of a way of doing it, but that's what it is. Anyway, I don't know if that sentence made any sense at all. Third song on the album, Isn't It Time? This is a song written by Brian, Mike Love, and Joe Thomas, and people named, someone named Millis and Pederick, whoever they are. Sounds like there's a little bit of a ukulele in there. This song is interesting because it manages to sound like 60s Beach Boys, like 70s Beach Boys, and like 80s Beach Boys after Brian had sort of gone away and Mike had taken over leadership of the group all at once. Kind of incorporates all the sounds through their history. To good effect though, Brian, Bruce Johnston, um, and Al Jardine sing the um, it's a good song it's uh, not a great song but it's a good song I'm going to give it a 6 fourth song is Spring Vacation which was written by Brian, Mike Love and Joe Thomas it's kind of a 70's soft rock sound to this song it's got a nice every, every 70's soft rock sound from the sort of nice organ introduction to the guitar solo in the middle, pleasant with uplifting vocals, um, pretty good song, I'm going to give it a 6-2, not a great thing. Um, the next song, number 5 on side 1, is Beaches in Mind, written by Brian, Mike Love, and Joe Thomas, Love Sings, uh, it's kind of a very 80s sounding song, it sounds a little bit, reminds me of Heat of the Moment, that old song by... Asia, I think, is the ones who did that, if I'm remembering my 80s bands correctly. Kind of a random 80s song. Sounds like something that would be on a, a B-grade teen comedy movie soundtrack. One of those movies where they couldn't get an actual member of the Brat Pack and they got sort of a unknown actors type movie, maybe. Uh, it's got a nice guitar lick, but um, it's not the best. Uh, Give it a give it a five, and we move on to 
to song number six, which closes side one, which is Daybreak Over the Ocean. A lot of the critics uh, peg this as the low point of the album because this is written by Mike Love and sung by Mike Love. But I will give it that the song is pretty and it flows pretty well. And it's... Um, doesn't really go anywhere, but it, it's it's nice and and uh, enjoyable enough. It's got a nice guitar with a, sort of a Spanish sound and a sort of a Caribbean Car Caribbean background. Uh, so it, it's not as bad, I think, as a lot of people say, but it's not great either. So I give it a I give it a four point five. We go to side two now. First song on side two is Shelter, which is Wilson and Thomas. And uh, it's sang by Wilson and someone named, I think, Jeff Foskett, who had worked with the Beach Boys and Brian Wilson in the past. He's a musician on some of Brian's solo albums and some of the Beach Boys albums as a backing musician. It's um, got some nice falsetto singing in it from uh, Wilson, I guess. Maybe Foskett, I'm not sure. Nice, nice lyrics. Do you ever still think of me in the way we used to be? Like that line. It's a song that the first time you hear it, first couple of times you hear it, it's just uh, not much to it, but it kind of grows on you with repeated listenings. So I'm going to give it a 7.5. One thing I'll say about this that some of the um, uh, reviews and so forth said was that the band uses the dreaded auto tune here and there, and you can hear that a few places uh, throughout the album which is a shame. I wish they wouldn't have done that. Uh, but I don't know if that's just a nod to try to stay current, or I don't know if that's that they're 60-something years old and they needed a little help, but I wish they would have just gone without it. So it detracts from the album, but the album is still, this is still a solid, really good album overall. Anyway, 7.5 for Shelter, I give it. The, uh, Next song, side two, I mean, side song number two on side two, The Private Life of Bill and Jane. This reminds me a little bit of I Want to Marry You, the Bruce Springsteen song off the river yeah, here and there. Uh, this is uh, Wilson and Joe Thomas. Wilson sings uh, lead. Uh, it's got that where they call out states, and I, I hate when songs do that, the hey Dallas, hey Detroit, hey Chicago, and it's got sort of that sort of thing, which I've never been a fan of, but it's got a nice tasteful bit of a guitar by David Marks, I'm assuming, and it's a kind of odd, funny song, a spoken word bit at the end, I think they're trying to make some kind of comment on the reality show nonsense that was all over the place back in uh, early 2000s and still around in 2012. Unfortunately, still around today. Not sure exactly what the point is, but I'm going to give this song an eight. I like it a lot. The one thing I will say about David Marks, and one thing that's sort of um, um, unfortunate about this album, it's great that he's back on an album for the first time in, I guess, we've been 49 years at this point. When he left the band, he did some solo singles and was in a group for a while, and he did a lot of studio work, and he went off to college in Boston at some point in the 70s and took classes in music and has uh, really improved as a guitar player. I think he was a pretty good surf guitar player to begin with back in his Beach Boy days, but um, the problem with this is that all of these songs, they list the who plays what, and most of these songs have two, three, four people playing guitar, so it's kind of hard to know who's playing what, and it's a shame that there aren't uh, at least a couple of songs it was just him on guitar only to let him showcase what he can do because I've heard him play guitar on uh, elsewhere and he, he's pretty good and, and uh, seems like a really neat guy so it's a shame that he doesn't have a showcase also it's a shame that he doesn't do any vocals on this he had only done I think one vocal on the first album back in 1963 as far as Beach Boy stuff and uh, would have been fun to have let him have a song to sing all I'm saying. Uh, yeah, so number three song on side two is Strange World. It's written by Wilson and Joe Thomas. Wilson sings. This is another very 80s sounding song. It, just sort of a random 80s sounding song. I'm going to give it a five. Uh, funny thing about this song is there's uh, one couple of parts in there where it reminds me of a Paul McCartney song. It's on the tip of my tongue and I can't think of which one it is um, just for a few seconds, but 
anyway, it, it's it's a uh, it's all right, but nothing great. So I give that a five. Then we get to the kind of what um, everyone says is the best part of the album: the last three songs. Fourth song on side two, from there to back again. Brian and Joe Thomas uh, wrote it. Uh, Brian and Al Jardine sing it. Uh, it's kind of looking back with hope uh, over your life type of lyrics, but also knowing that you're approaching 70 and the end is coming. Not necessarily sad or resigned about it, just sort of matter-of-factly looking back over your life. Uh, it's a very touching song, and I give that a 7.5. Pacific Coast Highway is the fifth song on side two. Brian Wilson and Joe Thomas again. Brian sings lead. Uh, I want to go home. Sunlight's fading and there's not much left to say is one of the lyrics. Sounds kind of like something that would have fit in on the Quadrophini album by The Who in parts, this song. And it's just um, kind of Brian Wilson taking a drive down memory lane and looking over his life and the people that he knew and the person that he was when he was younger and and just his life in general. The, this album is, um, I think, dedicated to to his mom and to Carl and Dennis Wilson, all who were passed away by this point. Uh, great song. I'm going to give it a 10. The final song, song number six, side two. Sorry, I keep looking down. I've got my notes here. Summer's Gone, written by Wilson, Joe Thomas, and uh, John Bon Jovi, of all people, which kind of strange. I never thought I would hear myself saying the words that I like, something that Bon Jovi had anything to do with, but great song. This is um, this is uh, just a beautiful, heartbreaking kind of coda to a 50-year career, to uh, anyone that's sort of of the age that grew up with the Beach Boys, that's not a teenager anymore, that's in their 50s, 60s, 70s now, to life in general, um, accepting the inevitable with the ray of hope still I guess not to get too deep but just a very beautiful beautiful song give that a 10 and the song ends with the sound of the waves coming in on a beach and during a thunderstorm which is probably a very fitting way to sum up the 50 year up and down roller coaster career of the Beach Boys and so yeah I give that a 10 so 2012, they did this. This is their last album to date. They went on this big, massive tour. I should have gone to see it, and unfortunately I didn't because they came through here. And then toward the end of the tour, Brian and some of the others wanted to keep going or take a break and come back and do another tour. Idiot Boy Mike Love, who I think owns the name of the Beach Boys now, decided different, and he wanted to go off on his own with him and uh, Bruce Johnston and do the the crappy Vegas, just retread the the hits uh, concert tours that he's been doing for the last 30 years, and didn't invite the rest of them along. Brian had even planned to write songs for another Beach Boys album after this. That didn't happen, and I think a lot of those songs, I could be totally incorrect here, but I think those some of those songs at least showed up on No Peer Pressure, his solo album from... Uh, 2015 or so. So, this is and may well be the last Beach Boys album, and to be honest with you, I hope that it is, because after the crappy albums of the 80s and 90s, and the um, Summer in Paradise debacle, and the Stars and Stripes, which isn't very good, it, it's a, a band that had made so much great music and so many great albums, a lot of them that didn't get the attention or praise that they deserved, uh, but that did have a crappy run from last 30 years of their career. It's good that they go out on a high note. And overall, this album has some songs that are just okay. This album has some really good highlights, and it's got some, some times when you can almost uh, feel like you're young again and back in the 60s and uh, other times that make you think about where you are now and the, what a ride it's been. So I would give this album on the overall a, an eight. Yeah, we'll go with an eight. 
it's a good way to end their career. I hope I hope this is kind of do hope this is the last album because I'd hate for them to come back with something else and it not be any good and that be their last album. And I think that Brian's doing well with his solo career stuff. He should just probably stick with that. Let Mike Love have the Beach Boys name and go out there like the Rolling Stone and just Rolling Stones and just tour forever and just just do the the hits for the people that want to hear California girls and good vibrations and so good way to end their career that wraps up the Beach Boys like I said I think I started doing these reviews back in 2014 or 15 if I'm not mistaken I'd have to look back and see maybe it's been at least two years a lot of albums to get through so we're finally to the end I do want to do the Brian Wilson solo albums and the Dennis Wilson solo albums and maybe the two Carls I don't have any interest in doing the other guys' solo albums. And a uh, good way to, to do it, I started this just to see for my own because I knew the Beach Boys hits and I wanted to see if their albums had songs, if they had songs worth listening to other than just the radio hits everybody knows. Found out pretty early on that they definitely do. And there's quite a few of their albums that are just greatness and worth picking up. So that does the Beach Boys. Hope everybody has a good day. We'll see you all later.